Don't ever try to introduce other males in with other, with other males. It'll be a bloodbath. All right, what's up everybody? This is part two of how to breed rodents. Um, in the other video, we were explaining, um, and Brian will link that video, um, about harem breeding. So that way you get a background on that before we go into explaining how our racks, uh, how to use our racks properly. Um, we kind of went over a little bit in there, but we'll go in depth about it um, and why it why we use those racks in this video. But we're gonna finish off explaining the changes and stuff about the um, 44-4, which is actually probably the most important one. With the 44-4, what are some of the changes that we have since uh, the old time? To try to get the the drawer pulls out on roller bearing rails, and then you can hit just hit two buttons and lift the tray out and take it out and ho and wash it. It's so convenient. But we're rolling back and then we had four water tips. Originally you had six, now we went it down to four because we don't need any more. But the tips used to have brass grommets that we would drill a hole in the tray and, and, Smash and stop, grommet. mash them in. And then we had a piece of PVC. We'd have to try to drill the holes in the P round pipe and you, we could never we could never get them perfect, but we, it was like an old 1975 Chevy truck where stuff was not perfect, but it worked, you know? It was a workhorse and the truck was a workhorse. The 44 was a workhorse, but was not very good. But I mean, we punch on the turret machine or run it on the new laser. Everything is with exact now, exact, perfect now. So we're and not going to have people uh, pushing the tray in and uh, hitting the valve anymore? No. We've uh, addressed those issues? All done, yeah. And the water box, you can, it, it seals all the water tubing in, internally in it. You can't, the rats can't get to it. And then there's covers on the side where the water tubing goes up. And though we have covers that protect the tubing, so all the water tubing is protected. Perfect, okay, so that's going over the water system since we're short on time. Back in the day we had uh, vacuum ABS form. vacuum form trays and then now we have Injecting. ABS injection mold. Oh, so oh. what's the difference? Every, every vacuum form tray is made from one flat sheet of, of ABS. They heat it up and they take vacuum and vacuum it down into a, into a <laughs> Onto uh, a mold. Onto into a mold. You, they can do it either in a male or a female. Ours was a female mold, so it would suck it down into it. And bend it everywhere, and then one, yeah, one, and form it to the tray. But they never two two never came out the same. But so that's how they do it. But an injection mold, as you can see, every tray that comes out is a hundred percent the same every time. So. I would say let's go over why would we use the 72130 to breed in the one point anywhere from 1.5 to 1.10 because as we put a little piece of tape and a little sharpie on it we put the date on it as we pull the females out the male never comes out no nope. oh uh, actually let's start over why would we use that rack model for breeding over another one the size, okay. Can you the size the of size it, a little bit? we can fit, you know, one male up to ten females. It depends on each individual, the size of their rats. Every, all rats are different size. Can be different species. Different gen genetics can, the Very. adults can be different sizes. So, our strain we can do up to one, ten females in it. It really depends on your environment. Your environment, your temperatures, everything. You really yeah. can only do 1.3 if your humidity is super high and it's super Correct. hot and you're not having an air exchange. What's the main reason? Is it because of the size? Yes, it's okay, a great so size for, for breeding one male up to however many females that you feel comfortable with. Okay, what would be some of the reasons why you think that's a good size? In the old days, it was because we, it was based off a of bus tray size. Okay. But we've made our own tray what's bigger it's in the same fits in the same slot but uh, the tray Not is actually long. no it's actually much bigger because a bus tray was all rounded had big old edges on it big old handles front and rear 
and it had big old round lips on it and the space was very small. And it wasn't as tall? It took a lot it. of floor space out of it. So we made our own mold and made our we own made tray. We made it taller, is it because of more airflow? No, it's the same height. No, I'm saying we made it taller. I meant like you made it where it has more more space, but is it because I of that maximizes way? the width and the length that I could get out of it. Okay, in the same size. In the same size. I maximize the width and the length for square inch, square footage or, or square inches or however you want to calculate it, you know? Okay. And so now the tray is a great size. It's easy to handle. And the bus tub is where it all started because that was what was available. And then I made the, the five wide FB10 to fit in the same rack and that's how- The 840. And you made it for the same dimension. The five trays. The, of frame dimension. To fit the standard size. So you could stack rack. the different sizes together. Yes, that's how that tray, that's Got how it. the 10 and the 10 dash Okay, five. now, 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 let's move to the next one. Okay, so the reason why you use the 72130 is the breeding. So in harem breeding, we pull the females, as you explained in the first part of the video, after 21 days to 35 days, you pull the females and put them into the 840-10-5. Dash, dash 10-5. Which is what you're explaining now, which is, go ahead. The reason how you came up with that yeah, design, well, that tray size. because uh, we made the rack for the bus tray that was three wide, so I made the five trays to fit into there. Into the same frame size. Into the same frame so size, so stack. we could stack them all together. Got it. So that way That's you can use the same jig. And then, then it's a perfect size for a single pre single female. So then you got your female in there and you chose that because the perfect size for the female so that she can have her babies and nurse the babies, right? Correct. And um, what time do you move them from that size tray just into what they, size tray? Just when they get to be a chubby, then we'll take all the pups from like five, five, six moms and put them into the 20 tray. Okay, what rack model A24, is this? A24-20. Okay. And we take and put, uh, you know, up to 50, 40 to 50 pups in there. And we, then we put four moms in there. And once they have given birth and they're just a little chubby, you can usually put them together and the mothers don't fight over them. But if you colony breed and they're, one mother is giving birth at a different time than the other mother, the mothers fight over them. They fight over all and the And then babies. once there is one speck of blood, then it's a bloodbath and all the babies are, they kill all the babies. Yeah, but once you already raised them from a pinky that have blood all over Correct. them. Correct. They're uh, not dropping them bloody together. Correct. Yes, but when the blood goes in there, when one mom drops and there's other moms in there, then the moms start eating the droppings of the maybe blood. Maybe the other moms, or maybe the mom itself so that they can't get taken away from her. Correct. That's the, why we're breeding them. It's like them the and, kid on, in, the, in the sandbox that can't play nice. <laughs> yeah. because there's another yeah. kid in there but when we move them when they're just a little chubby you know like you know x amount of days i can't say exactly how many days but when we move them with four females we usually 99.9 percent .9 of the time never have the females kill the babies you might get one out of every but they've already been raised and they got some fuzz on them at that point. Not even fuzz almost, just barely fuzz, yeah. Yeah, they got fuzz at that point, right? Yeah. When they're chubbies, they usually got a little bit of fuzz, right? Yeah. So if they have a little bit of fuzz, they've already been washed off of all types of blood right. and all that. They've already been established. Correct. And all the moms are lactating, so there's plenty of babies. So and they're not a male. They're not in, fighting over they're it. They're not fighting over it, and the male's not in there. And the male's not in there firing everybody up. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. So, okay, so then we talked about moving it from the 840 10-5 to 824-20. The 824-20, which is where you raise them up to weanlings, weanlings, right? And then what happens once they become weanlings in there with the moms, you move them to I move where? to the 44-4s. Move all the, all the weanlings to the 44-4 and then take the moms and we have a, a male all back in the 721 with just a male, take off the old date, put a new date, today's date on there, and put 10 females in with a new date. And then you wait 21 to 35 days, and then you know if the females are no good or the male no good. 
and this is and that's how you tell if a male is no good that's how you tell if a female is no good time to retire and the, the females you might want to retire at a very young age and then you might have females that are very very old it doesn't matter just some females produce better than others and then you can start going beyond that by when you're pulling the pregnant female and putting them in the 10 the 10-5s to give babies the ones that are only giving you know five babies or under those moms you get rid of and you only keep the moms that are giving you 10 12 14 15 whatever pups the rodents tell you what to do right. basically so that's what happens we pull the the moms with all their babies the weanlings and put them into the 44-4 and like then we sex them all out at that right once at, they get yeah. to how long right after they're you know, they've been in there for the next week. We, we sex them all out, all males in one tray, all females in another tray. Get them separated early. And what's the reason? Males grow faster, so you can sell the males as uh, mediums and large way faster than you can a female. This so is cash flow advice, everybody. For your cash flow, for production, or for feed. Either one. The males grow twice as fast. Right. right. And you need less of them. For breeding you need, you need less males for breeding and you don't need all those for breeding one serves five to ten yeah yeah and then we'll take a a tray of females when they get to a small large and we'll take maybe 25 males and put them into that holding pen tray this is if you're really trying to turn up your production yeah and this is where the females will get pregnant for their first time just one time in the 44 only one time then they'll go and give birth to their babies and then that's after they give birth to their babies and get the weanlings out of that female, that female will go into the 721. But so the that cycle. you can see the cycle and see when you need to wean or get- and That's how you monitor. That's how you can find the females that are no good at that point in the 721 when they're breeding. If they, you know, like I said, 21 to 35 days. She's not pregnant. You know, you got 10 females and you got six females that are pregnant at 21 to 25 days, 30 days, and then the rest of the four females aren't getting pregnant. You already know. You know which ones are no That's good. That's how you single them, single them out and yeah. you figure out what's good and what's That's not. That's how you know exactly what females are no good. No guesswork, no paperwork, no writing paperwork on each tray, no nothing. Very simple. Don't ever try to introduce other males in with other, with other males. It'll be a bloodbath. <laughs> so these are also tips. Once these the males have gone right in here. with a female, that's one reason For we those of you that stuck in this long, this is where the vital information is One coming. reason we separate all the males 100% in a tray, because we can raise those to, to adults or jumbos. If they've never seen a female, if they've been in with a fee, that group has been in with a female, the males will be a bloodbath. They will chew every tail of every male off and They'll just chew each other's nuts off. Too. Nuts off everything. They'll destroy each other. But if you separate them as as small, weanlings and smalls, and only males, make sure you don't make a mistake and have a couple females in there. For those of you that made it this far, you guys have gotten some super extremely potent tips, pro tips for breeding rats and. I hope this helps you guys all. And all over, over these years, we I never usually like to give all the information out unless people were buying from us, you know. Right, but anybody that now, watched these two videos knows there's no other option but buying from us because of the quality and how we've been through all the headaches and all that stuff. I get phone calls. The only reason I'm comfortable doing this, Dad, yeah. the only reason I'm comfortable letting you tell everybody all this information is because I see people go build racks or I'll, they'll tell me they're gonna go build racks because the bill is too expensive, but then they always call me back either six months later, a year later, sometimes it's even two years later after they've gotten sick of what they've when built. Once they buy one rack, then They already know, it's, they, it, that's why I'm to. comfortable giving out this information right. because everybody is, I mean, they're obviously gonna probably buy all the, the, the parts from us anyway, but mm -hmm. outside of that, they always end up getting their colony started with that and then, buying the racks yeah. from us so mm -hmm. it only makes sense for to get you guys the absolute most vital information for rodent breeding because there's a huge demand for rats and you could definitely capitalize on breeding rodents for uh, feeders for the reptile industry 
and this guy is an absolute fucking genius and I am extremely <laughs> fucking proud to be able to call him my father and I hope you guys fucking love this video. <laughs> Have a good one guys.